everyone, this is Dr. Israb with Integrative Kidney Institute, and today I'm going to be talking to you about the second principle of our integrative approach to kidney health. And uh, I know it, this pandemic has uh, been prolonged and has taken the best out of us, so I hope everyone is doing okay. Uh, but we really want to also raise an awareness to this other pandemic, which is the pandemic of chronic kidney disease, which according to 2017 statistics, it affected 700,000 people worldwide. And one in seven people are affected by chronic kidney disease, according to the CDC. So again, let's talk today about the second principle of uh, our integrative approach to kidney health. So let's do this. So environmental toxins are important in how we approach kidney health from an integrative medicine point of view. And we all get exposed to, unfortunately, environmental toxins in our daily activities. And depending on our lifestyle, we will be exposed to more environmental toxins or less environmental toxins. So let's start by talking about those polyfluoroalkyls, which are, in another word, is expressed as the forever chemicals that when they contaminate our environment, they will always be present in the environment for a long time. Uh, and these are present and contaminate our water and our drinks, uh, our juices. They are present in the preservative there uh, that are added to the processed food. They're present in the textile and furniture and medical and dental instruments and uh, implants. And they unfortunately been linked to a lot of cancers and kidney diseases. So they've been studied and they found to affect the kidneys also, and they affect the kidneys directly by injuring the tubules that we talked about in a previous video, causing inflammation, uh, fibrosis, and they also cause oxidative stress in the tubules. And also indirectly, they cause metabolic syndrome, increase insulin resistance and diabetes, and also they increase blood lipid levels. So this is all documented. I'm putting the studies for you so that you know that um, this is all documented in the literature. Now, on the other side, there's also those heavy metals that we always have known about from the 1960s and so on. So arsenic, lead, cadmium, mercury, all these things can affect the kidneys and other organs in the body. So let's take an example, arsenic. And we had a video, uh, we talked about arsenic uh, kidney toxicity, and I'll share that here for you. It does contaminate our water supply in many areas in the world, and it causes high blood pressure, and it also causes direct kidney damage by damaging our DNA. Cadmium on the other side is used in fer fertilizers, uh, pains and cigarettes. Oh, so if you smoke one pack of cigarette a day, you get exposed to one to two microgram of cadmium every day. And that has been linked to direct kidney injury and high blood pressure in the world. Now, lead is one of those prevalent toxins throughout the world. And in, in a study that was done in uh, 2020 that looked at the global burden of kidney disease they found that lead is one of the major risk factors for chronic kidney disease all throughout the world. And lead is present in batteries, potteries, and, and water pipes. And we've seen what happened in Flint, Michigan a few years ago, and it's still a problem. In fact, uh, I'm a medical director of some of the dialysis units, so I get water reports on the city water. And in many times, I've seen that lead is uh, present in city water higher than even the regular limits. And it, we know that it caused a growth delay in children and chronic kidney disease and high blood pressure it also causes gout. And this triad of kidney disease, hypertension, and gout is classic for lead exposure. And we'll talk about that in a future video. So when we think about all these environmental toxins, how do we approach them from an integrative way uh, and, and how we do that in Integrative Kidney Institute. So we think about these in several ways. One, we think we focus on genetics, we focus on the nutrition, and we talk about synergy. And when we think about genetics, we think each one of us is unique. All these environmental toxins utilizes enzymes, transporters, and receptors that can vary from person to person. So genetic variations in these enzymes or transporters or receptors may increase the risk for environmental toxins 
or decrease the susceptibility to an environmental toxins. And unfortunately, every government they set, this is the toxic limit of lead, for example, or arsenic or whatever, but not everybody is the same. So a normal exposure for one person could be a toxic exposure for another. And when you think about nutrition, so how does nutrition, the same enzymes that are utilized to metabolize and detoxify your body from these toxins, utilizes micronutrients as cofactors to help them to function optimally. And if you have deficiencies in, in some micronutrients, then you are increasing your risk for the toxic results of these toxins. So for example, zinc has been found to be protective against cadmium because many of enzymes that are utilized in cadmium detoxification utilizes zinc as a cofactor. Now, also I wanna mention here, which we don't have it written in a slide, our own microbiome also play an important factor in our detoxification. They also produce enzymes that help us to detoxify and get rid of all these toxins. And sometimes if there is dysbiosis, um, and we talked about dysbiosis in a previous video that I'll link here, where there's imbalance in the bacteria in our gut, the bad bacteria may even cause an increased exposure to these toxins. And, and finally, I wanna draw your attention to something called synergy, where exposure to two toxins, even below the toxic levels, increase the toxicity of both of them. And we see that in the synergy between heavy metals and pesticides. And so here there's an example of pesticide increasing the toxicity of lead, for example, and alcohol and cadmium, if they're combined together, they increase the toxicity of cadmium. Lead and arsenic together has more toxicity than either of them alone. So I hope you like this video. And if you like this video, follow us on Facebook. Twitter, Instagram, and our YouTube channel, and on www.inkidney.com. And hey, I would love for you to click the like button if you like the video and share this video with uh, everybody who you think may be interested in listening to this and subscribe to our channel.